Friday and a very beautiful Friday, a special one for my extended family, the Omibod family, because today marks the 60th birthday of one of us, Professor Olayinka Omibod, a pride to the family, first woman psychiatrist in Africa, and so many firsts. First woman provost of the College of Medicine. Uh, University College Hospital Ibadan. I don't want to go into all that right now, but that's somebody that I know cannot have any guilty conscience because the Lord has been using her and I pray the Lord will continue to use her. This is your life boy today and the topic of our discussion is a guilty conscience. We will be reading from the book of Genesis. Let me remind you that today is actually Friday, the 10th day of February 2023. We'll be reading from Genesis chapter 50, a very long passage we have to read, so let's go very quickly. Then Joseph fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. Forty days were required for it for so many required for embalming. And the Egyptians wept for him 70 days. And when the days of weeping for him were past, Joseph spoke to the household of Pharaoh saying, if now I have found favor in your eyes, speak, I pray you in the ears of Pharaoh saying, my father made me swear saying, I am about to die in my tomb which I hewed for my mother in the land of Canaan, there shall you bury me. Now therefore let me go up, I pray you, and bury my father, then I will return. And Pharaoh answered, Go up and bury your father as he made you swear. So Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his household, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, as well as all the household of Joseph, his brothers and his father's household. Only their children, their flocks, and their herds were left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen. It was a very great company. When they came near to the threshing floor of Etad, which is beyond the Jordan, they lamented there with a very great and sorrowful lamentation, and he made a mourning for his father seven days. When the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning on the threshing floor of Etad, they said, This is a grievous mourning to the Egyptians. Therefore, the place was named Abel Mizraim. It is beyond the Jordan. Thus, his sons did for him as he had commanded them. For his sons carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field at Machpelah to the east of Mamre, which Abraham bought with the field from Ephron the Hittite, to possess as a burying place. After he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt with his brothers and all who had gone up with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, it may be that Joseph will eat us and pay us back for all the evil which we did to him. So. 
they sent a message to Joseph saying, your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, forgive, I pray you, the transgressions of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. And now we pray you forgive the transgressions of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Fear not, for I am in um, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he reassured them and comforted them. So Joseph dwelled in, the, in Egypt, he and his father's house, and Joseph lived a hundred and ten years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation. The children also of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were born upon Joseph's knees. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will visit you and will bring you up out of this land to the land which is swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph took an oath of the sons of Israel, saying, God will visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died, being a hundred and ten years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Very long passage for that matter, and so many things rolled into one here. Uh, just as an aside, the mourning of a 130 years old man and everybody in Canaan knew that it was a great mourning in Egypt. They didn't even say in Israel. That's how much Joseph was important and was loved in the land where he served as prime minister. I hope all our politicians will learn from this and let it be that people will be able to actually love all of us after we have served in particular positions not only in politics in corporate organizations and the public service in uh, uh, private organizations anywhere you need to serve with all diligence so that people will celebrate with you when it's time for celebration i will mourn with you when it's time for mourning although i don't know what it is about mourning a 130 year old man my own father died 30 years short of that. Well, but the real message for today is the guilty conscience of the brothers of Joseph, who, because of the guilt they had about all the evil that they did to him, they were sure that he was going to repay them evil for evil. Let me make a confession here. Perhaps not the most apt for this sermon, but I mean, that's actually what happened. There was somebody who did so many things wrong in the course of the profession of architecture and i had warned him several times not to do to, not to continue doing those things and so on an occasion about the time when i was going to leave uh, being chairman of the nigerian institute of architects in Oshun state after a stint of four years i told him that if he did that thing again i will make sure that his uh, architect's license was withdrawn from him and he dared me and he did it again and I made sure that his license was withdrawn from him. I saw him just about two or three months ago. I didn't even recognize him anymore. He was the one that called me and greeted me and I said, oh, who is this? And he said, it is me. And I didn't know when the words just came out of my mouth. I said, I am sorry. Why was I sorry? Because even in spite of all the efforts that I put into sanitizing that space, other people kept on doing that same thing he was doing. And then he announced to me, oh, I've started doing it again. You are no more the chairman now. So, I mean, nobody is sanitizing anything about us there again. But the thing is, when I saw him and he told me who he was, I greeted him with a guilty 
conscience. I don't know if this is an appropriate um, 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 uh, example, but that is what happened. But with the one concerning those that were the brothers of Joseph, they had every reason to be guilty because what they did was truly evil. But Joseph forgave them. And that is what Christianity is all about. In spite of whatever anybody must have done to you or may still do to you in the nearest future, be ready to forgive because the guilty conscience will always be there with them. But even you, do you have that requisite guilty conscience towards God for you to know that you need to repent and give your life to Christ today? Well, if perhaps you've come to that level right now, I want to send an invitation to you. It's time to give your life to Christ. And all you need to do is just say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. I'm coming with a guilty conscience and I pray that you'll forgive me today. Restore me completely to you and let it be that from today I will also be called by your name of Christian, a child of God. I pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Welcome to the fold of Christ. It's a beautiful weekend for you to do that. And you need to find a Bible-believing church, especially since Sunday is around the bend, where you will continue to grow in the faith and dispense completely away with the guilty conscience. I always recommend the Anglican Church of Rukia's extension to Shubu. You'll find us in the chapel hall of the Olive Branches Middle and High Schools. For now, Oyikwa and Gokyumibo, the drive of Rukia's extension to Shubu, will be there this coming Sunday, 9 o'clock in the morning. Join us to worship. And if it's midweek, you want to join us every Tuesday, 5 o'clock in the late afternoon. We are there worshiping in the presence of the Lord without any guilty conscience. And here, yeah, as you go out today, for the rest of this weekend, pray that the blood of the Lord Jesus will cleanse you from all guilt. And I say that prayer to you, that the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all guilt, both in the past and in the present. So you will present yourself guiltless before Christ every day of your life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So go out today. Go without a guilty conscience if you are in Christ, and it will be well with you. God bless you.